Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our Let's Play of Space Exploration and Cross Warrior 2. So, the work week is still very buzzy. Uh, my backlog is still not really present, hence um, uploads are still not really regular. I do hope I can fix it by the weekend, but I can only tell you if I fix it by the weekend after the weekend has passed. Ha! Good. Nevertheless, we will just focus on with these more unprepared episodes let's call them like that unprepared episodes and we will just do more things live as we go we're picking off right as we left off we have just finished off setting up and moving along uh the motors over here the motors over here are going doing well we've also set up some new trains going up into space and if you remember last time we had that space issue if we go up over here uh to where it was happening if you remember trains were coming up and actually you know what we could do let's just save the game real quick there we go and just load up the thing that we saw last time because i did make a save right around this train debug and i can immediately show you what's going on because it was almost as i thought it was i thought the signals were messing up the train because when when the train moves between the both both the surfaces if the train moves up into here uh, whenever it comes out over here, it will basically spawn part of a new train and then part of a new train and part of a new train. And that might cause issues in the pathfinding and in the signals as much or so I thought. But what was actually happening is uh, it were these stations over here. These stations over here, these are limited to a certain train limit. And if I deactivate the limit, then we will see the train that is coming out over here. We didn't unlimit them downstairs, but we did un unlimit them upstairs. Then the train over there will just go out as expected. Whereas this one over here is still having trouble getting down because if we go down, if we are fast enough for that, oh God, we're all the way over here, then we will see that we did not fix the station over here. So he had trouble going down, whereas the other train did not have any trouble going up. And the reason for that is when the train over here gets spawned in part by part by part by part, it will try to find itself um, a path to the station it wants to go, but it comes into a sort of a deadlock state with itself because itself has already reserved the station and then it tries to reserve a path to the station again. It can't because the train limit is enabled, so it more or less has to wait for the, um, the path request claim over here to time out and then it can move on. And that, that's why we get this stuttering effect over here. And the solution to this is just don't give these stations over here a limit. And I thought about it for a bit. And actually, we don't need to give these uh, stations over here a limit because these stations over here, these are automatically limited by their input stations over here. And these input stations over here, they do have a limit. And they will only open up for as many stations um, um, that are open over here. So if these all are full, then these over here will also respectively be closed. So we don't even run into the issue that we don't, that we have too many trains trying to pathfind over here. So we already are alleviating the issue that trains can get stuck in the elevator. So the system we made over here, it's good. It's good. It's really, really good. I really do enjoy what we have over here. And we can definitely use this for coming on projects. Just for reference, let's load this one up again, just so that you can see the effect one more time. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. We're loading it up again. This time around, we are not going to unlimit these stations. And the train should be coming up here any second now. And we should then immediately see the effect that will be happening over here of the train having the stuttering issue. And maybe we can even see over here in the train limits the exact effect that is going on. Good, 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 good. Um, Come on, train. Where are you? First of all, we will see the, this train over here go down. And then... Let's maybe have a peek downstairs. Uh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> we're over here again because, of course, I loaded up the safe game. Uh, he's coming up. He's coming up. There we go. He is already having issues. There we go. That's the stuttering. And if we take a look at the station over here, you can see train limit zero, train limit one. That's him, himself, working with that. If we set this to two... Then he has no issue anymore, and he just goes through. Or if we just disable the limit in general. And that is maybe just, maybe two lines of script, the wrong way around. Maybe just two processing, uh, or two parallel processing parts that are going just the, the, the wrong way around. Uh, it could be just a minor bug, but that is not my problem. <laughs> that is the problem of the Factorio devs and the moderator, and uh, not the moderators, um, and the mod makers. Good. We are going back over here where we left it off. 
And today we're going to take a look at big electric motors yet again. And we're also probably going to take a look at finally making that low density structure machine. Because I'm standing over here and I was kind of looking at motors. For one, motors, we can make motors over here. Actually, we could make motors over here. We could also make them over here. Uh, we should probably make them over here because the output is right over here. And we're going to need these outputs over there for the big electric engines. And I also thought about building or at least designing something for the LDS build. And I don't really want to use this train over here to bring the scaffolding to the LDS build. Instead, we're just going to run a belt from over here to over here, and we're going to do the LDS build over here. So let's maybe start off with LDS. And for that, we go over here and we switch over to this one. Good. Now, the LDS build itself, this machine over here still has a crafting speed of 16, which does mean we will need, well, we need 32 plastic bars every 10 seconds. So that's 3.2 per second. And we need 1.6 aero frame scaffold per second. So that is a decent amount of scaffold. I kind of forgot how much scaffold we make. Let's have a peek. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 24 in total. Uh, all of them running at crafting speed 16. Let's just switch this to the scaffold recipe real quick. Um, what do we have? So we make 4 per second per machine. Um, crafting speed is 16. So we do 16 crafts in 4 seconds. Uh, or over four, um, yeah, 16 crafts over the, the time period of four seconds. So that is four crafts per second. Perfect. And then on top of that, we get like 33% out of that um, as a productivity bonus. We could just keep calculating with the four per second and just let the productivity bonus roll with it. Um, that will be fine. We could also do a bit of a positive estimate and go with a productivity bonus of 50%. And then we could maybe think about that we get six L, I'm not LDS, six aeroframe scaffolds over here per second per machine. We've got 12 machines times six. That is 72. Yeah, that's 72. <laughs> so 72 is coming out as a theoretical maximum. Actually, it's going to be way more than that. Uh, you know what? We, we should not really think too much about it. Let's just, well, 72, the speed will be the same. We could calculate with 72. Let's maybe calculate with 72. But then again, 72, we need 1.6 per machine. If we have 10 machines, that's 16. 20 machines, that's 32. Uh, 40 machines, that's 64 per second. Mm, we could do 64 per second in 40 machines. That would also mean 40 machines would make times 3.2, 120-ish, if we take a little... LDS per second. Hmm. Wait a minute. Uh, let's have a look at you. How many machines are you? Well, oh, that's about 60. Sure, let's start designing something. I've got some fun ideas. Okay, let's start off there. Um, we do need inputs. We have four inputs in total and one output. Uh, for now, just using me yellow inserters. We could do the same thing again we already did in the past where we make a double layered structure like this um and then how do we do this one again did we do it like this somehow i think we did didn't we and then maybe use a blue belt yeah blue belt's fine there we go there we go maybe maybe make all of this blue all of this can be blue there we go there we go. It doesn't need to be blue, but we're going to be blue double D double dying. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then we have multiple inputs over here. And every machine over here does make um, 3.2 per second as an output. On top of that, of course, adds the productivity bonus. But 3.2, 6.4 in total. Good. I'm, I'm just going to invest more into swarm safety. <laughs> So 6.4 over here as an output. That is definitely yellow speed. But I don't think we can get the yellow belt on here. No, we cannot. So let's maybe just go with red outputs over here. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Here we go. And then we do something like this and something like that. And then we have a single element. Sure, we can make multiples of these. We can completely and utterly. Uh, maybe, maybe not go too big on that. Hmm... 
we do need to keep in mind that we need to be able to get stuff in here as well. Uh, I do know we have a similar build already, but I kind of want to see if we can somehow... Ooh, this could be... This is terrible. <laughs> this could work. And we take it to get blue. Here we go. And yeah, by the way, a new satellite has launched. Did not find anything new. There might be more. Uh, uh, there, there may be more to find around the stars. Yeah, uh, we've been. <laughs> Where's the interstellar map? We've been sending out probes all this time, and we have now discovered every star out there but not the contents of the star themselves. So we know where all the stars are, we have all the star names, but we do not have any of the star contents yet. We are still more or less stuck over here in our little solar system over here. There, there is inter... not interplanetary, intersolar travel at some point in time, but, well, we cannot really do that technically, I think. But it's not it's not lucrative yet. It's, it's not good for us yet. But maybe at some point in time, we could definitely do that. Good. I'm kind of thinking about this. This this makes yeah, that makes sense. We can we can run like this. Okay, okay, okay. And then of course we get like an input like this, an input like this, an input like this. Oh wait a minute. Oh, yeah, pull you down. Oh. <laughs> this one doesn't work like that. Um. So what do we need to do? There, yeah, move it up by one. And then move all of this up by one. That could work. I mean, now all of these are connected. All of this is connected. And then we just do something like this and that. And it'll be fine. And then we can stack these together. As much as we like. We can actually even go a little bit deeper than that. We can really stack these together. Like, really, really, really... Oh, wait, can we? Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it always looks like, because the red over there is a red inserter or red belt, it looks like we can't do that. But we, we can definitely do that. There we go. And then we get something like this. So, can we get all of this inside of a single beacon? We can. We can place the beacon all the way over here. And not only that, we can take the whole thing. We can flip it. And do it again. Look at that. And if we move you out to all the way over there, then we can even add one more row to it. Like one over there. And one over there. How many machines is this? 32. <laughs> Looks good. Looks very good. I mean, oh, there we go. Do take the whole thing. Uh, only issue, of course, is... Um, yeah, we, we don't have any kind of connection in terms of power yet. Um, I do hope we can get power connections in. No, we, we can't do this. <laughs> that will break everything. Um, here we go. Here we go. And then we definitely have an output belt like this. And an output belt like that. Here we go. We might need even need two. It's 3.2. Items per machine. It's 6.4 per uh, items per machine, actually. So 6.4, 12.8, 25.6, and then this total is 51.2. And with the bottom flag of 51.2, and then we add 33% on top of that. Oh, God. 51.2 <laughs> and 33% on top of that. And it's like another... 20 or something like that. We get up to like 70-ish LDS per second over here from the top side alone. And then the bottom side over here also is yet again another 70-ish. That's a good amount of LDS. That's a very good amount of LDS. I also kind of like how this looks so bloody chaotic over here. Um, okay, this goes in. Uh, we will probably have to flip this belt around in here, actually. Yeah, take the whole thing. Ah. <laughs> I see that we need to do something like this. There we go. And next time around, maybe just take this and flip it from over here. Because that makes it a little bit easier. 
Good, 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 good. And then we definitely do not need this over there or that over there or any of this. We do need something like this and that. There we go. Sure, we can go with this. Now, powering this thing up. We do have Substations Mark II and Substations Mark II are big enough to hit the top assembly machines and stuff like that. So we can maybe put down a power pole over here, a power pole over there, a power pole over here, and a power pole over there. And then everything is powered. Look at that. <laughs> it looks pretty insane. But it's basically just push, 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 push. Make as many LDS as we can. And just go ham on it. And going ham on it is definitely something we want to do. So, you know what? We're going to be building this. This over here looks perfectly, perfectly fine. I'm happy with this. Very happy with this. Good. The only thing, of course, that's missing is some lamps. Um, no. <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe if we're lucky. Oh, we can place one over there. We can place one over there. And we can place one over there. And one over there. Good. And then we can place, like, lamps. And these gaps over here, lovely. And we have no gaps over here. <laughs> I mean, not having any gaps uh, is also a very nice way to say, like, yeah, we, we maxed out everything. But let's maybe mirror the lamps over here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, you have to. We have to move you around a bit. Yeah, move you over there, and move you. Oh, we placed you over there. Wait a minute. Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's correct. Oh, this this looks somehow very confusing. What are we missing? We we basically placed you. And we're placed in the same spot. We moved you around. I was collecting a combined. Uh, I was comparing apples and pears again. It, it happened so fast. You can you can compare apples and pears at lightning speeds. They will still be apples and pears. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then of course these over there. Wait a minute. Is that? Oh, that's an interesting bug. Look, if the entity is not spawned in, you don't see the power coverage. Good, 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 good. Not really a bug. That is just, that's just how games work. Good. Excellent. I'll take it. I'll take it exactly like this. And where did it go? There we go. And we want to place you near you. So. Oh, I think we can barely make it over here. I was kind of hoping that we don't really need to build over this over here, but I don't think we have to. Things we need to think about. Um, first of all, station uh, station distances. So we will have a station over here. And then we will have a station over there and a station over there. We got three input stations. One for plastic, one for steel, one for... Glass. <laughs> <laughs> then comes the machine. Which can be sitting right over here. Sure. And then we could just move the output over here and just move through the mineral water field over here. So, so that we can still tap the mineral water field and maybe even have an output over here for the mineral water. As for the LDS, I think we will be providing two trains. One for novice natives or not novice grant um, requests and one for novice space platform requests. And we can easily split it up if we need to. Good. So, um, wait. This one, please. Let's fly over there real quick. And let's see if we can design a train station or two. I also got a whole bunch of steel ingots in my pocket. Oh, yeah. That's the thing I did. Not quite sure. Did I, did I show that off yet? Uh, I did add more steel making machines over here. Uh, now, we have like one for copper, two for iron. Um, because these, these recipes do take a little bit longer. And I think I calculated it for copper and just one to one took it for iron and for steel, but that is not correct. We need one for copper, two for iron, and four for steel, which also means that we do need a bit of a balance over here. And I'm not quite sure if we actually do need the balance over here, but I kind of rested a little bit easier with having the balance over there. And yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. Good. So let's, let's make ourselves a big LDS making machine. What do we need all these LDS for? Well, basically, everything in space is made out of LDS. So, well, it, it all goes into there. Like, every every kind of space building needs LDS. I'm pretty sure that modules over here will require LDS at some point. 
They should, actually. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in making a metric ton of LDS. Absolutely not. Good. Let's park it over here. And let's see. These train stations over here, these look very tight together. Is that really how we did it over there? No. <laughs> these are input stations. So we need this as a distance guide, not this. There we go. Uh, we'll still be fine. We could technically just copy over this station over here. I'm just going to make a blueprint out of it. There we go. And by blueprint out of it, I mean just copy it over like this. Uh, I see. We do need to flip it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and I'm very terrible at it, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm usually not really, really that eager in making big blueprints all the time. I usually just change and edit things on the fly, however I see fit. Um, can we actually... Wait a minute. Can we? No, we can't flip these. <laughs> we can flip them by hand by just taking the left side, uh, put it over there, and taking the right side. Well, almost taking the right side. We we have to keep the signals. Okay, put you over there. Remove all of this. Take this thing, flip it, and then place it over here. Here we go. Here we go. That 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 kind of works. <laughs> that kind of works. Good. And then we can just make more of these one by one. There we go. Good. That will be plastic, steel, and glass. And then to top it all off, we need this lovely machine over here. How big are these? Yeah, let me just place this one over there real quick. So that we have you as a gauge. Sure, place it over here. I think we can work over here. And then the only thing we need to do is connect up all the inputs and the outputs. So we get an output over there, an output over there, an output over there, an output over there, an output over there. And we are just going to connect you up like this, you like that, and you like that. Good. And this one over there. This one will be the special one. This one goes all the way over there. We lost the rocket on Novice Orbit. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> nuclear power plant is right next to it. That could have hit the nuclear power plant. Um, it's actually kind of interesting to see that we actually broke a rocket over here. How, how high are we on rocket survivability? We are at rocket survivability 10%. How did that even happen? We can't see the stats for the rockets over here. Uh, cargo rockets. Um, that is survivability. A loss of chance is reduced by 61%. I guess we have to do some more than that. Yeah, rockets, not really the most reliable thing to have. Space trains and spaceships, way better. Way better. Good, 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 good. But let's keep on connecting up you. Yeah, you over there. You over there. And you over there. Good, good. There we go. And then, as for the output over here, we already got, like, this output over here. And we are going to be using this one. I think we can... Oh, yeah, we can. <laughs> one very, very, very long on the ground over here. Going all the way over there. And then from here on out, we just go, like, all the way across. All the way across. And then we go under... Okay, that, that, that does have a limit. <laughs> Go there. It'll be fine. And I guess... Yeah, go over there for now. Because then we go up. And we go in. And then we just take out all of these. All of those. And all of these. And that'll be fine. That will be the arrow frame scaffold coming from the other side of the machine. Or of the facility. Just to fill these up. Um... Yeah, we, we should probably... Yeah, let's move you over there as well. Let's move you all the way over there. And we just connect them up like this. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Good. Perfect. Excellent. And then that is the LDS machine. And this machine, I mean, look at it. It's very tightly built. It's going to be... Oh, all of these are the wrong way around. Oh, no. <laughs> Can we copy-paste them? Nope. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Well, um, I will have some clicking to do. Lovely. Lots and lots of clicking to do. Well, that's half of them almost done. And I will probably mess up at least one. Where I accidentally double click it or something like that. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always being a little bit, how to put it, not lazy, but not attentive about my copy-paste thingies. But to be perfectly honest, the game is so malleable, it doesn't really matter. Just fix it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Good. And at least we figured this one out before we booted up the machine. Um, doing this afterwards can sometimes be a little bit more annoying. Here we go. And this one over here. Need to chop a stone to fix this one. I can guarantee you, I probably missed one, and I can already see the first comment popping up going like, Bald! Bald! You bloody idiot! You forgot one! And I go like, yep, I know. <laughs> I know. Good, 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 good. The only thing we can do over here is clean up the corners over here a little bit. Mm. Here we go. Good, that is now also done. And then, same down here. Let's clean up these corners as well. Well, we place it now. That's fine. Here we go. Here we go. Good. And then, as for the output, the output will then be over here. As for the output itself, um, can we place you? Yeah, over there. The output itself will just be two trains where it goes on. Uh, there will be no buffer whatsoever. We use the train itself as a buffer. There we go. There we go. Which does mean how close are we going to be building it? Let's build it this way. This close together. Good. But this is just only train station implementation stuff. Uh, all of this over here goes down. Goes down. And from here on out, we split it onto the train. And that is a pretty easy and straightforward job. And that will be our LDS build. And I'm looking very much forward to it. I'm very much looking forward to all the LDS that we need. I mean, making 140 LDS per second. How much LDS do we need in our SPM base? I don't remember. I won't have to look it up. But yeah, all the SPM. And also this place over here can still be upgraded. Wait a minute. Something is not correct over here. Now it is. Did, did we accidentally move you around? Because now you actually cover all of these. There we go. There we go. Yeah, now all of these machines over here are being covered by the white area beacon. And I mean, we cover. 32 machines with one white area beacon. Perfect. Good. That will be it for today. If you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a comment, a subscription. Every one of these actions does help me out in growing this YouTube channel. It's something bloody amazing. Um, yes, sorry, <laughs> look at work. I should not look at work. Uh, and without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening and until next time, see you around. Perfect timing, like, like right at the end, a message for some people. You see this, what? <laughs>